Good day everyone, my name is Nicole G. Beltran and today we're going to tackle about plumbing and sanitary work. So before we proceed to our discussion, let me ask you about what comes in your mind when you hear the word plumbing. So if you ask me, my answer would be tubo or pipes in English. Now, let's find out the true definition of plumbing and see if your answer and my answer is correct. So plumbing is the skill and art that is needed to transport fluid. If your answer is somewhat similar to mine, you're actually correct because it is part of the components of plumbing. It serves as a conveyor that makes the transport of fluid possible. However, let me tell you that there is more to plumbing that meets the eye. There are actually different principles to follow which we will be tackling as we go through our topic. So we have two primary objectives of plumbing. First is for the distribution and use of potable water, kanang water na kinadeliver sa tuwang mga balay, and second is for the removal of waterborne waste, kanang water na nagamit na nato. So, by the way, we are focused on water as our fluid here, but plumbing is not limited to this because plumbing can also be used to convey any kind of liquid and gases. Plumbing uses a variety of apparatuses. So pipes, valves, plumbing fixtures, tanks are just some of its common examples and this will be thoroughly discussed by the succeeding reporters. Let me also present to you some of the examples of plumbing applications. So plumbing, through plumbing, these applications can be made. So HVAC systems, waste removal systems, and potable water delivery. Sanitary work, on the other hand, refers to carrying the wastewater to the waste disposal system or sewerage system through plumbing fixtures. So from the word sanitary, sanitary work makes use of plumbing systems to collect and deliver the wastewater from our homes to the waste disposal system or also called the sewerage system so that it can be brought to treatment plants before it is released to the environment. Here in the Philippines, the Code of Practice, Design, and Installation, including the establishment of performance criteria for plumbing, are specified in the 1999 National Plumbing Code of the Philippines. So, this code is created for the protection of health and safety through proper design, installation, and maintenance of plumbing systems. Let me briefly discuss about the components of plumbing. So there are actually three main components of plumbing. The water supply system, plumbing fixtures, and drainage system, which has two types, the sanitary drainage system and the storm water drainage system. And lastly is the fire protection system, which is optional because all buildings may not need this but recommended for high-rise buildings. So, water supply system consists of the piping and fittings that supply hot and cold water from the building water supply to the fixtures. This consists of piping and fittings that conveys water from the source to the water outlets. So next is the plumbing fixtures. It is an exchangeable device which can be connected to a plumbing system to deliver and drain water. These are the water outlet that I've mentioned earlier. So examples are faucets and sinks, toilets, shower heads, bathtubs, and many more. So next, sanitary drainage system. It is a system of piping within public or private premises 
that conveys sewage or other liquid waste to an appro approved point of disposal. And stormwater drainage system is a network of structures, channels, and underground pipes that carry stormwater or rainwater to ponds, lakes, streams, and rivers. So remember that sanitary drainage system carries wastewater and deliver it to a treatment plant before it gets released to the environment. While the stormwater drainage system collects rainwater and directs it to the bodies of water I have mentioned. So, fire protection system includes fire suppression, sprinklers, smoke detectors, and other fire protection equipment that works in tandem to protect against fire. So, all these um, components will be thoroughly discussed in um, the succeeding reporters. So, now let us proceed to the points that the plumber must keep into consideration before starting the plumbing work, plumbing and sanitary work. So these are guiding principles for plumbing and sanitary work. First is for the water supply system. The plumber must take note of the possible sources of clean and potable water in the area. So the following are the principles that the plumber must follow. So, an adequate quantity of clean and potable water for drinking purposes should be supplied. Water from other sources should also be made available for daily use for 24 hours of efficient flushing. Proper pumping systems with adequate standby arrangement should be made. Water should also be supplied with the required pressure up to OHWT or overhead water tank and then to the individual residential units with the minimum prescribed pressure. And lastly, the system should invoke minimum maintenance. The next one would be for the plumbing fixtures and pipes. The plumber must have some knowledge about different requirements and specifications which are all stated in the National Plumbing Code of the Philippines. So. First is for the plumbing fixtures, it should be smoothly finished for uninterrupted flow, located in well-ventilated enclosures docks, easily accessible for the intended use and repairs, able to withstand design pressure, connected to a drainage system with water seal traps, and lastly, tested for leakages, defects, and a lot more. So next, the plumbing pipes should be made of durable material and connected by suitable and satisfactory joints of good workmanship for satisfactory service during its reasonable life expectancy. Easily accessible for inspection, working, and repairs. Made rodent proof, such as rats, mouse, and squirrels, and a lot more. And lastly, also tested for leakages defects. Next is for the sanitary and drainage system. The plumber must have enough knowledge about sewage systems. So these are the points to consider. It should be well designed, executed, operated, and maintained according to national standards and as per the provisions of the local municipal authority. It should be leak-proof while crossing the potable supply system. It should be properly ventilated and have adequate trap system provided with necessary water seals to avoid foul gases. It should, be, it should have properly prescribed slopes. And lastly, it should require minimum water for proper performance and cleaning. For the storm water drainage system, all buildings there Terraces should have proper slopes for carrying rainwater towards a catch point. The total project should be well planned to avoid the accumulation of rainwater in ducts, parking on roads or open grounds. And lastly, we should have well connected storm water drains with proper slopes for carrying unused water. These drains 
should be inspected and maintained properly, especially before rains. And for the last one, the use of plumbing drawings. Plumbing and sanitation work procedure drawings must include all the minor details for the following reasons. So, drawings are useful for calculating the accurate quantity of the materials to be used. And for, proc for procuring good materials as per specifications to avoid unnecessary wastages of the materials, to coordinate all the steps of plumbing work, to plan and execute the work properly, proves easy maintenance of underground and concealed pipes, and lastly, to provide appropriate accessories for reducing frictional losses. So these are the uses of plumbing drawings. So these are all guiding principles that are important to take note about because plumbing and sanitary work is essential for construction and it also ensures the hygiene of every house, office, or any structure being built. So these are all the references I used in my report. You can access them later if you have any further um, clarifications. So that would be all for my report. Thank you so much for listening.